Hi and hello all. Let us have a look at Gabriel synthesis. In Gabriel synthesis, a thalamide reacts with KOH and then reacts with an alkyl halide to form N alkyl thalamide. This one reaction with appropriate reagents gives amine. The base could be KOH or any other appropriate base. So Gabriel synthesis is the synthesis of amines from alkyl halide using thalamide. As Gabriel published this in 1887 in a German journal, Sigmund Gabriel is a German chemist, rough translation of that uh, title, about a preparation of primary amines from the corresponding halogen compound. So it was published in 1887. Let us have a quick look of the paper. So this is the paper in German language published by S. Gabriel. So now let us have a look at the mechanism of this synthesis, Gabriel synthesis. So the synthesis starts with uh, thalamide. It reacts with the base. Let us say we are using KOH here. Potassium hydroxide is the base here. And uh, base will pick up a proton. This hydrogen on nitrogen is the most acidic hydrogen in this thalamide. So this proton will be picked up by the base. Let us show that. OH- picks up the proton to become water and this nitrogen hydrogen bond breaks at the same time. So the two electrons in oxygen is going to stay in between oxygen and hydrogen. That means there is going to be a new bond between hydrogen and oxygen. So this will become totally H2O while this old bond that hydrogen nitrogen bond will break and the two electron will go to nitrogen. One electron in this bond belongs to nitrogen. One electron belongs to hydrogen. Both electrons go to nitrogen, that means nitrogen will have a negative charge. So let us write the product here. So there will be a negative charge on nitrogen. So the counter ion will be K plus, that is potassium hydroxide. We used potassium hydroxide. The counter ion here will be K plus. So you will get potassium thalamide. So this thalamide is a synthone for NH2 minus. It is a resonance stabilized. So we have potassium thalamide. K plus will be in the solution, that is the counter ion. And this anion is a resonance stabilized. Let us show the resonance structures for this anion. This is one resonance structure. This is another resonance structure. So we have three resonance structures for this anion. So this ion is stabilized because of resonance. So in the next step, this ion will react with an alkyl halide. This will act as a nucleophile and alkyl halide has a good leaving group. So an SN2 reaction will happen. So this nucleophile react with the alkyl halide and it reacts and it attacks this carbon and the leaving group leaves here Cl minus leaves. So this curved arrow means there is going to be a new bond between this nitrogen and this carbon. Let us draw that. While this bond forms, this negative charge will disappear and the Cl minus will leave from here. HCl is an autocorrection, it's actually Cl minus leaves from that substrate. So this black bone is the new bone. This N-alkyl imide will not react with uh, another molecule of alkyl halide because the lone pair in this nitrogen is involved in resonance with these carbonyl groups. Let us show that resonance. So this is one resonance structure. Similarly, we could have another resonance structure. So these three resonance structures are possible for this structure. And clearly, this lone pair is involved in this resonance. This lone pair is responsible for this pi bond here and also here. So this lone pair is not quite available for a nucleophilic addition to an alkyl halide. So this nitrogen will react with only one alkyl halide. It will not react further. So that's the speciality of this reaction and that's the speciality of this thalamide. That's why this reaction is special. Let us explore that sentence a little bit further. Suppose we had amine rather than this imide or uh, ammonia. It will have a lone pair and it could react with an alkyl halide. So this will react here and Cl- will leave. So the lone pair attacks this carbon and Cl- leave, just like in the Gabriel synthesis. So this will result in species and this H plus will be left out to form HCl. So altogether minus HCl. So one of the nitrogen H bond will break. Both electron will go to nitrogen. So that means nitrogen will no longer have a positive charge. It will be and amine. But this will not stop here because it's, this nitrogen is having a lone pair now. This could again react with another alkyl halide and the reaction can continue. So there will be a new bond between this nitrogen and this carbon and so nitrogen will have a positive charge 
and this chlorine will leave us Cl minus. So again, another alkyl group got added to this nitrogen. Again, an H plus can be removed from this species and total an HCl will be removed. The lone pair will be back on nitrogen. So the two electrons in this bond is going to be on nitrogen. That means uh, nitrogen will have uh, will be neutral and it will have a lone pair. Again, this lone pair can attack another alkyl halide. Then again, a new bond forms between this nitrogen and another carbon and uh, Cl minus leaves. And nitrogen will have a positive charge. This, this positively charged nitrogen can become neutral by removing a proton from here. A proton, a deprotonation will yield tertiary amine. Tertiary amine has a lone pair. In, in theory, it could also react with another alkyl halide and form a quaternary ammonium salt. So arrow can be shown, curved arrow can be shown like this. So the lone pair on nitrogen will be responsible for another bond between this nitrogen and another carbon and this Cl minus leaves and forming another carbon nitrogen bond here. Thus we will have a quaternary ammonium salt and the counter ion will be Cl minus in this case. If instead of a thalamide, ammonia is reacting, we will get a mixture of primary amine, secondary amine, tertiary amine and quaternary ammonium salt. So all these possibilities are there, all these products will be obtained and so the yield will be very low. If you want primary amine, you won't get primary amine but you will get a mixture of primary, secondary and tertiary and quaternary ammonium salt. That's not a good reaction, yield will be very low. So that's why we have to employ a reaction where it will react only once or it will stop at primary amine if you want the primary amine. That's what Gabriel synthesis does. Once this reaction happens, as this lone pair is in resonance with this carbonyl groups, it will not react further. It will add to only one alkyl halide. So we can stop at primary amine. Actually, this fact is the first sentence in uh, Gabriel's paper. So this is a rough translation of the first sentence of Gabriel's paper. When preparing primary amines from the corresponding organic halogen compounds and ammonia, yield is known to be reduced by the fact that after replacing the halogen by the amino group, the reaction usually does not stop, but rather go through a second, third steps, etc. So that sentence means this, these reactions, the primary amine is formed in the first step, but it could further react with another alkyl halide to form secondary amine. Then it could react with another alkyl halide to form tertiary uh, amine. And in theory, this tertiary amine can react with another alkyl halide to form quaternary ammonium salt. So the yield will be very low. So Gabriel put forward this synthesis using thalamide to overcome that limitation. So addition of nitrogen to alkyl halide happens only once. So now we have the N-alkyl thalamide part. We could remove the thalamide from to get the amine free by hydrolysis. We could use uh, acid hydrolysis or base hydrolysis. Uh, if it is acid hydrolysis, amine will become corresponding salt. If it is a base hydrolysis, the hydrolysis will happen and the amine will be free where we have this breaking of this bond and this bond and corresponding acid will be formed here. Rather than acid, this will be salt of the acid as it is in the basic medium. So in basic medium, it will be the salt of the thalic acid and we will have our amine free. So after hydrolysis of the N-alkylimide, we will get the amine. Rather than acid or base hydrolysis, we could employ hydrazineolysis. That is the reaction with the hydrazine to break this carbon nitrogen bond and free this amine. And the reaction will be like this and this amine will be free. So let us have a look at the mechanism once again. A base will pick up the proton from the thalamide and a negatively charged species will form and it is resonance stabilized. This will react with the alkyl halide to form N-alkyl thalamide and that's also resonance stabilized. As this nitrogen's lone pair is involved in, resonance, involved in resonance, it will not react further with any other alkyl halide. From N-alkyl thalamide, we can separate amine from, through hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis or base hydrolysis like this or hydrazineolysis. Uh, could be employed to free the amine. We can show a possible mechanism here itself for the hydrolysis. So this OH- could react with the carbonyl carbon atom. 
forming a new bone here. So this is the new bone and at the same time this old bone will break. The negative charge will be on this oxygen. Further, this pi bone could regenerate. At the same time, this bone could break. Let us show that here itself. This is going to be, this is going to be the new bone and the old bone breaking is this one. So let's remove this curved arrows. The negative charge will now be on nitrogen. This negative charge could pick up this proton from this carboxylic acid. Now again, another OH- could attack this carbonyl carbon atom. The same mechanism will repeat. This bond breaks. And let us show the bond breaking here itself. There's going to be a new bond between this oxygen and this carbonyl carbon atom. An old bond, that is this bond is going to break. And that's HE Soto correction. This negative charge will not be on this oxygen, but it will be rather on this oxygen. So this will be another intermediate. Now this pi bond could regenerate and this bond could break. So let us show that this breaks at the same time, uh, this old bond is breaking. When this old bone breaks, this actually, uh, that's sort autocorrection of actually, this negative charge will be on nitrogen. So nitrogen will pick up a proton from this oxygen and the negative charge will be on oxygen and this will be NH2R and that is the structure. This uh, carboxylate uh, uh, deprotonated thalic acid, thalate here and this is free amine. In the same way, we could show, show the mechanism of this reaction here. I will just show it here itself rather than writing it in several steps. This lone pair could attack this carbonyl carbon atom. So the new bone forms and uh, at the same time the old bone will break. So let us represent those bones. There are some auto corrections and let us represent the charges there. So the negative charge will be on oxygen and there will be a positive charge on uh, this nitrogen. So one of this hydrogen can be picked up by this uh, oxygen. Let us show with the curved arrow. And the old bond is going to break and both electron is going to be on nitrogen. So now let us make those bonds here. So the new bond will be between oxygen and hydrogen. And the old bond is going to break. So there will be a negative charge on oxygen and there will be a positive charge on nitrogen. And this O minus, uh, these two electrons could come back and form the pi bond again. And old bond has to break and this time this bond will break. Let us represent those bones here itself. Let us magnify it a little bit. The new bone will be here. At the same time, old bone will break. So this auto correction, there will be a negative charge on nitrogen. So this nitrogen could pick up a proton from this, this hydrazine's nitrogen. And a new bone will be between nitrogen and hydrogen and the old bone will break. This nitrogen hydrogen bone will break. So let us draw the bones here. The negative charge will no longer be here and there will be no positive charge as this bond is breaking. Now the lone pair on this nitrogen could attack the carbonyl carbon atom and the same mechanism could repeat. So there will be a new bond between this nitrogen and this carbonyl carbon atom. Let us indicate with that a curved arrow like this. When a new bond forms, an old bond will break and this will form O minus. Now let us represent the bonds here. This is the new bond. And at the same time, an old bone will break. Uh, so there are auto corrections. We have to remove that. This lone pair is no longer there. The positive charge will be on nitrogen. And there will be a negative charge on this oxygen. So those H, H is auto correction. <clears throat> there was an extra H here. And there was one H from this nitrogen was not shown because of auto correction. Now it's fine. Again, this O minus could pick up a proton from this nitrogen. Again, these two electrons could come, come back to form the pi bond again. And at the same time, the old bond will break. This bond could break. So let us show that. This is going to break. And there is an auto correction. This, there will be a negative charge on this nitrogen rather than a hydrogen. So let's put the negative charge on nitrogen. So that's the species. And... Proton will be picked up by this negatively charged nitrogen and this will break and because of that there will be a new bond between this nitrogen and this hydrogen and the old bond will break that means this positive charge will not be there and this negative charge also will not be there we have the product this is this is actually this one and this is the mean like this this is the one 
I was just showing the mechanism of those reactions in case if you are interested. Hope you understood what is Gabriel synthesis and what is its mechanism. Thank you.